Edgy's a great guy. That's my boss. In the studio, I'll go in sometimes just with the drum, drum tech to make the albums. So I get to take care of all of them. And that's, that's for me, that's the, to be part of that magic from the foundation up. Come in, the, nothing in that room when they come in. They, they don't write at home and work the songs out like they did back in the, there were budgets and war in October. I wasn't around for those, but Edge told me, you know, they get those songs. Then they'd come in and Steve Lilly White would slam them down. And Bono still talks about how he doesn't think his vocal was great at all in those days and all that stuff. But, but uh, I, w I just want to say that, that to hear them, they come in with nothing, with a riff, you know? Edge comes in with a riff. And, and you see Larry sitting there, you know, and Adam has an acoustic bass, a beautiful old Martin, you know, and, uh, and he starts fiddling around there. That's how they do it. And they make loads of mistakes. And then we call it Bangalese. I, I get to be there for this. This is, this is the magic part of it. I love it even more than the touring. The touring is, is delivering my department, uh, hopefully 100% every night. Same type of thing. He can do what he wants to do, but that's that's as you know my responsibility. And but in the studio, and you just sitting around going, I hear that. Okay, what well, you know? What's this going to? I've heard this riff with just Edge and I for a week or two. Now hear Adam come in and Bono come in with no lyric, but just and say, look around the room and see, you know, see that sign or something. Reverb, and it doesn't make any sense, but. It launches, and then to see that thing come into this album with a U2 approach, which is anything goes, mistakes go, and then we get to the final five months, and it's what guitar is best, and oh, we did that all day, but no, and then he really becomes that sonic pioneer, and some of it will wear you, wear you out, you know, three, four, five in the morning of dun dun, you know, tiny spits, but but then the, uh, he still pursues that at, at his age and at the band's point in their career where they could definitely rest on their laurels and have a straight ahead echo to a Vox amp, or if, if, if I may, or a deluxe. And they don't, he won't. It's, let's try it, we might not use it, but let's keep going for two or three days and try, try to better. But it's a curse with, with the band, I can say that, is the, the ideas don't stop. You know, that Vertigo was that way. It was a song about a frustrated American Native Indian on a reservation. And then, and then Edge went out with some mates in Dublin or something to a club. And he comes back one day, it's not about that. It's, I'm in a club and I'm, Jesus around her neck. There's you know, these beautiful women with rosaries on her neck. And that's what, that's what he called them, Jesus around her neck. And, and so, so these, these charts that these guys put up, the producers, Lily White, you know, whoever, you know, we've got a verse, we got a group, we just need a solo, we need a middle eight, you know, yeah. Or we're not, it's not even about that anymore. We're doing this, but we're gonna use that middle eight. That's what they did with, I think, one. We're gonna use that middle eight from that song on this other song. What? What? You know, and it's a gift, you know, it's really beyond employment to, to see those songs come to fruition and to know like I do, what's gonna be on the net? What could be on the next album? They they had over thirty, I think thirty seven songs to whittle down for this. When you take, when you spend two or three years making an album, you have a lot of tracks, you know. So and then to, to see those come in again for the next album, but uh, sculpted differently, you know, different shape. And anyway, I like that part. Mm -hmm.